My name is Alexis Zinadis. Today we'll be talking to you guys about a study that was that is show that shows aggression and affiliation during social conflict in pigs. Um, it was conducted by a couple of scientists from the Netherlands. Uh, their names are shown below. So yeah, let's get started. Um, let's start with the ethics involved in this uh, study. Um, they were carried out in strict accordance to the European guidelines for accommodation and care of animals. Uh, their protocol was approved by the Institutional Animal Care and Use Committee of Wageningen University. The methods involved in this um, experiment, I study, uh, so it was, um, half, uh, 30, 384 total pigs were collected. Uh, the study was conducted once they were nine weeks of age. They were housed in 64 pens and studied over four batches. So they were, um, you know, they divided them in four. Once they were, once the 384 were divided into the 64 pens, then they split them off in four groups. Um, the, they were offspring of 64, 2 pig, 20, so, and 24 temple boars. So the, what the two pigs, what the two pigs twenty so uh, represents or means is um, it's essentially a parent. Uh, so so it's like a a way of planting. Um, uh, um, that produces large number of high quality piglets, and the temple boars they are just known as a robust and strong, fast growing um, pigs. Or boars. <clears throat> um, pigs were housed in groups of six, uh, three females and three castrated males. Um, and let me just and then the um, sorry, the, so yeah, um, so half of, half of each group, um, was, uh, housed in barren pens, and the other half were, were contained in enriched pens. Now, the main difference in that is that barren pens are, Essentially, uh, they're in a very infertile place, kind of very bleak, kind of not well kept. And the enriched pens are the complete opposite. You know, they have a, they have a solid floor with deep litter bedding, with straw and wood shavings. So it's a bit more comfier than a barren pen. However, each pen did have a single space feeder and a nipple drinker provided for each, for every pig. For all the pigs, I guess. Um, they also conducted a test called the regrouping test, where, um, from each pen, there were two familiar pigs that they would mark, um, to help identify which pair was which, and they were joined by two other pairs of pigs also originating from two different pens. Um, and they, they, uh, set up a video camera, and they essentially just documented what was, what happened overnight, and after 24 hours, the pigs were returned to their original pen, where they had, where they would then have, uh, fre fresh skin lesions immediately recorded, and those, um, were thought to have, uh, occurred due to maybe either stress or just as we will later see, some aggressiveness. Spatial distribution was also um, conducted. That is where the data was gathered in the regrouping test. And that is where every hour from the moment that all the six pigs had entered the pen, a screenshot was being taken of the video footage. However, the screenshot was only taken if four out of the six pigs in the pen were laying down. And it's kind of hard to picture. I wish they had, like, a, um, a figure, but unfortunately they did not. 
but for each pen, a grid with corresponding x and y coordinates were made was made at an appropriate scale to be overlaid on the video playback, so they could then, um, with use uh, rulers that were also placed alongside the pen, to calculate distances that the pe that the um, pigs had from one another, and it uh, had a, it showed a distinction between familiar between familiar pigs and uh, four familiar four unfamiliar pigs. They also did. Um, they also uh, conducted a blood collection and haptoglobin determination. Um, haptoglobin is a is a phase protein that um, essentially essentially serves as a biomarker for stress. So it's like a stress uh, indicator. So pigs were sampled in the week before the regrouping test on week eight, and at the third day after the test, week nine, because apparently, apparently haptoglobin may peak several days after the initial stressor. I'm not sure why, and they didn't mention either. But the blood was collected in a serum tube and stored at room temperature. The samples were incubated for one hour at 37 degrees Celsius, and then was centrifuged at 70 degrees, 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, then, uh, 100 microliters of hemoglobin was added to the sera in 7.5 microliter increments, and then it was gently mixed. Thereafter, a chromogen was, uh, 104, 104 liters of chromogen was added to the solution and was incubated for five minutes at room temperature. Um, and yeah, the concentration of haptoglobin, uh, was calculated with a standard linear curve for known concentrations of haptoglobin. And for analysis, week eight subtracted from the levels that week nine were used, and it is referred to here as the change in haptoglobin. So data preparation, the way I guess they handled the spatial coordinates was um, they used the a squared plus b squared equals c squared equation where a equals x uh, equals pig 1 minus pig 2 where pig 1 is the x coordinate of one pig and pig 2 is the x coordinate of another pig and the same procedure was used for b um, then the square root of the resulting c was the distance between two pigs. Um, they also had this thing called uh, a principal component analysis. So the behavioral and psych physio physiological data correlated with Pearson correlation on a general linear model. Um, of 10 variables, uh, 4 showed significant correlation above 0.30 and due to this, this PCA was conducted. Um, also, so our results, um, in activity was then, uh, behaviors that were analyzed, um, in activity, aggression, and social nosing, um, fam familiarity, Familiar familiarity fam familiarity familiarity wow that's hard to say uh, pigs uh, stayed in close proximity to the pigs they were familiar to 